Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure at Universal's Islands of Adventure is currently being praised as one of the best rides to be devised by Universal Creative. The roller coaster flawlessly combines the best parts of modern roller coasters and dark rides to create a ride that satisfies all. It also finds the best balance between a great family coaster and some of the most innovative elements to be used in a large scale theme park roller coaster to date. With its moderate lean both on storytelling and on ride experience, it's no wonder this innovative coaster has posed extraordinary wait times. And it better, as the ride took Disney's record for most expensive roller coaster ever built and ran with it, with the ride estimated to cost over $300 million to construct. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the technology of the ride including the track, the train design, electronics, the ride's launch system, and its control system, as well as the history of the ride. So sit back, relax, or stand in a queue line, which you're probably already doing, and let's find out how Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure works. Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure replaced Dueling Dragons, a pair of Dueling B&M inverter coasters that opened with Islands of Adventure May 28, 1999. The coasters were designed specifically to duel and had three near-miss interactions in close proximity of the opposing train. The ride went through a name change, dropped the dueling element, and received a retheme with the introduction of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. The ride closed in early September of 2017 with demolition and, to the dismay of devoted fans, the scrapping of the ride soon after. From there, all of the station and the queue building were demolished, and the land was re-leveled to create new terrain for the new coaster. During the rest of 2017 and all of 2018, speculation ran rampant as Universal's Islands of Adventure did not announce the ride until much of it was near completion. When the walls around the ride finally came down, it revealed a groundbreaking coaster made by Swiss manufacturer Intamin, surrounded by thousands of newly planted trees to create a forest look. Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure officially opened to the public on June 13, 2019. Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure provides riders with the experience they have longed for, being able to hop aboard a motorbike or sidecar and travel through a magical forest to visit their favorite half-human, half-giant. With this extraordinary undertaking, there are several complex parts to the ride that all must work seamlessly to give you the ride of your life. The ride's queue is a heavy redo of the original Dueling Dragons queue. It removes the tent and banners used to cover the former Dueling Dragons theme during the Dragon Challenge era. While being simplistic, the queue features several nods to the former coaster and a use of 3D holographic technology, which is a modern Pepper's Ghost effect with simple water effects to simulate the water space in the pre-show scene. After guests go through the outdoor queue, indoor queue, and pre-show, they board a now duplicated train made up of multiple copies of Hagrid's motorbike and sidecar. The complex technology of the ride begins immediately with the train that you board. To cut down on weight and the appearance of the train, the body of the train in each car is greatly simplified. The chassis consists of the basic spine, wheels, and the seat frame. Universal then provide the fiberglass bodies that make up the motorbike and sidecar. The ride uses lap bars instead of traditional over-the-shoulder restraints, as the ride does not go upside down. These lap bars are crucial to rider safety and will not make exceptions for riders outside of the safety zone. So please use the test seats outside of the ride as the motorbike is a more forgiving seat for guests of a larger build. Each restraint functions in a redundant manner, requiring power to unlock the restraint to ensure rider safety. Since the ride features many story pieces, power is needed to keep the story going while it's moving. On each car of the train, a black box sits between and under riders in the base of the car. This houses the battery that powers the computer that controls the lights on the car, sounds and audio on the car, restraint controls, and communication with the ride's master computer. Each of the cars is physically connected to each other by a ball joint and the computers are each linked by a large bundle of cables that allow each car to communicate and the train to communicate with the master computer. The ride employs the continuous loading system, often seen on Disney rides to speed up loading times and can increase the amount of riders per hour. The station is dynamic and uses a conveyor belt that moves at the same pace of the train that comes through after unloading. Each row loads one at a time so when the train reaches the end of the conveyor belt, it is ready to send out or dispatch. When you board the train, the person riding the motorbike boards first. Each rider sits down, pulls down their lap bar, and waits for an attendant to check it. You may notice after the attendant checks your harness, the bike comes alive with lights and sound. On the side of the car hidden under the shell of the sidecar is an RFID reader. This is the same reader and tag system parks like Disney use to eliminate barcodes on tickets. The attendants that check your harness are wearing a small wristband with a chip that is recognized by the train. 
The wristband must be intentionally touched to the reader to confirm each row is cleared and allows the park to know which attendant checked the harness. With all this technology inside the train requiring electricity to power at all, you might ask when it charges, since the trains are almost constantly moving. On the bottom of the train sits a pair of bus bar shoes. These match up with the bus bars mounted to the track in the station and can connect to power and communication in the train. Because of the design, the bus bars can keep a continuous power connection while moving. The train can charge from just before the turn into the unload area until just prior to the first launch. And from the train we move to the track. Along the way, there are several technologies and systems that must work in perfect unison to provide you with a seamless and comfortable ride. This is how they do it. Because the ride exerts a variety of forces on riders, the track can often change in shape throughout the ride to accommodate different forces from the trains. As speed picks up during your journey, the train places an immense amount of stress on the track. As the ride begins, the coaster's track starts out on a flat linear track, comprising of just the rails the train rides on and cross ties linking the rails. With each sharper bank along the track, the cross ties also stretch diagonally to direct stress to other locations. When the coaster finally picks up speed, the track switches over to a triangular shaped track that allows for high speed turns and more aggressive maneuvers as the stress is now directed below the track into the finger like cross ties between the rails and the spine of the track. This different shaped track is also paired with larger supports that take such a load and stress. When not launching on flat turns, the rider uses traditional drive tires to move the train. Being the world's most expensive coaster, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure features the most launches on any coaster to date, with 7 total. Because the ride is an intimate coaster, it uses the Tech linear induction motor system. You might be familiar with them as they are featured on other rides that have this white fin LIM system. This linear motor system moves away from older technology that relied on carefully calibrated systems to stop and then launch a train down a straightaway. This often involved using a catapult style launch system or using an array of drive tires matched with a fin or rough flat surface on the bottom of the train. Both of these systems, for one reason or another, would not be as reliable for a large scale coaster like this, especially in its location. Instead, the system Hagrid's Motorback Adventure uses utilizes solid state electric coils to attract and repel permanent magnets on the bottom of the train. When carefully synchronized, these linear motors can create magnetic fields to carefully control the position of the train by varying their current. These motors also have the capability to work against the direction of travel of the train to act as brakes. Because of the weight of the trains, it would be unwise to use the linear motors to launch a train from a standstill. Like in the station, there are drive tires before each set of linear motors. Using a number of proximity sensors, the system can move the drive tires when a train approaches, get the train moving into the launch area, and then tell the linear motors to activate or energize. This creates what is called a rolling launch, when a train is already moving when it passes over the linear motors, which then accelerate the train rather than get it moving from a complete stop. In the event that a linear motor fails to activate, there are non-electric copper fins that rise up from under the track that will create a resistance to slow the train until the linear motors can re-establish control of the train. In sequence, the launch works as follows. The proximity sensors sense the train, turn on the drive tires, move the train towards the launch, sense the train's progress using more sensors, activates the linear motors, moves the redundant brakes up and waits for the train to safely clear the launch. Then it does this six more times. As the train makes slow passes by show scenes, a separate system starts different show scenes featuring animated figures made by Garner Holt. You might be familiar with their work as they have made many of the animatronics seen at Disney parks as well. The rest of the ride meanders around to replicate the mayhem one would expect from Hagrid, stopping past show scenes, crashing through large cathedral ruin, or rushing past trees. In fact, Universal planted over 1,000 trees to create what will become a real-life forbidden forest. This is a stark difference between the days of Dueling Dragons, which had a very open area to show off the now demolished coaster. With a quick pass by Fluffy, riders quickly turn left into the next major point of the ride. The train is accelerated again using linear motors down into a trench and suddenly, riders emerge from the mist only to see that they've come to a dead end and the train stalls on the ride's 70 degree inclined spike. Now what? Unbeknownst to riders, they have just passed by one of Intamin's latest innovations, a high speed live transfer. Pretty much every coaster that runs one or more trains has a track switch but is only used to mainly move a train between the course and a maintenance area and are operated via a control panel. The difference here is this transfer features two pieces of track designed to allow the ride to automatically swap out a section while the train is still moving nearby, 
This provides a seamless ride without having to stop and wait for the track to switch like on other coasters. In careful collaboration with the linear motors and proximity sensors along the launch and spike, the transfer is able to quickly move the table switching the left turn into another straightaway fitted with more linear motors. In the event that the transfer is not able to switch or finish its swap and the train has already stalled and is on its way back, more redundant brakes will quickly rise and bring the train to the stop before the transfer. Once the train stalls, it reverses travel and heads backward over the same linear motor stretch, which has now been extended to have more linear motors and add more speed. After the train has cleared the other side of the track, the transfer quickly switches back to prepare for the next train. This is visible as riders head backwards to the next scene as shown here. Riders are then sent through an upward spiral into the show building. As the train enters the next show scene, the train is slowed down and riders are still heading backwards. The train passes a centaur figure as it travels too far into the Forbidden Forest and is directed into one of two identical show scenes using a regular switch track designed to boost capacity. At this point, the train comes to a stop and riders are led to believe that they are now in danger of being entangled in the infamous Devil's Snare. Oh, Craigie, you're tangled in Devil's Snare. Repeat. What riders don't know is that they are parked at a dead end. They can't go out the same way they came, and they can't turn around. So now what? How about a drop track? That's right, riders have been placed on something Intamin has been working on since 13 at Alton Towers, a three-story, multi-ton drop track. This rare element on coasters essentially takes a piece of track and a loaded train and drops it. The structure comprises of a train length piece of track fitted with drive tires that move the train until sensors signal that the train is parked in the proper location. Clamp brakes then secure the train from moving while the drop track is armed. This entire setup is mounted upon one large pneumatic cylinder buried under the ground. When signaled, pins connecting the drop track piece and the upper floor track pull out, the cylinder has air evacuated and the track free falls until it hits magnetic brakes mounted on the side. In total, the drop track free falls 17 feet giving riders one powerful scare. While riders catch their breath, the drop track is carefully aligned with the new track on the lower floor. When the train ahead of the riders clears the brake run, the train is rolled out of the drop track and into the final forceful launch. At this point, the drop track can quickly reset to accept the next train. Using more linear motors, the ride sends the train back to the station via a launch into a hard left and overbank turn and a sweep into the brake run. The brake run features many of the copper brakes used on the launches, but are used here purely to slow the train down. Once the train is moving at a manageable speed, the brakes lower to hand over control to the drive tires, which tore riders to the final unicorn scene, where the train can begin charging again, and then a U-turn into the unload station. The entire ride lasts just a few minutes, but also manages to perfectly orchestrate multiple trains onto the track at the same time, up to seven in fact. But how? It all leads back to the master computer and all those stops you made along the way, as well as the proximity sensors. If you notice, each launch section or station area all have a way to stop and move riders. Brakes to stop, linear motors or regular motors with drive tires to move. Each of these sections with that capability is called a block section. During the ride, each train is moved to keep at least one block section between the train ahead of it and behind it. This usually only applies to areas in what can be called volatile blocks, where there is a movement that cannot be undone. In the event that a train does not clear a launch or does not arrive or stop at the block section, the ride will stop all other trains and emergency stop the ride. In non-volatile locations like the station, trains can be parked or moved right next to each other. In the event that a train is taking long to load or unload, or has encountered an error, the surrounding trains out on the course can be paused on the block sections and show scenes can be extended to a limit to account for the holdup. Once cleared, the usual cycles can continue and riders continue along their winding journey through the Forbidden Forest to meet their favorite half-human, half-giant along the way, coming face-to-face -face with Hagrid's magical creatures. Altogether, this technology works in unison to create a seamless and thrilling adventure that has amazed and blown away hundreds of thousands of riders and will continue to do so for decades to come. I hope you've enjoyed this informational dive into the inner workings of Hagrid's magical creatures and motorbike adventure. We create these videos to showcase the awe-inspiring technology and engineering that goes into creating the rides we all our heads off on daily. If you did enjoy this, definitely let me know so that I can make more by like, commenting, but first subscribing down below. Thank you for joining us, and we hope we've inspired your curiosity through technology and engineering. 
Be sure to check out the playlist of other How Does This Survive Work videos in the iCard above, some of which you might like, there's a lot of them. We make educational ride models and our social media is linked below. Once again, thank you so much for watching and subscribing. Welcome to Coaster Labs, and we'll see you in the parks.